Last time we started section 11.5, which is lines and planes in space, um, and we had gotten to the point um, in here, let me find it, where we had looked for where planes intersect. Um, in particular, we were trying to decide whether they were parallel or they intersected, and if in fact they intersected, finding the point of intersection. And if you'll remember when we did that, we first verified that they weren't parallel, and then deciding whether they intersected or not is that we sort of assumed that they intersected and looked for an intersection point, and since we found an intersection point, we know they did intersect, and had we not been able to find an intersection point, then we would have known that they were skew. So I wanted to talk to you then about planes in space, which is where we left off. We were talking about um, normal vectors. Um, a vector is normal if it's orthogonal to all of the vectors lying in that plane. And we have this standard equation of a plane in space. And we are going to take a look at finding the equation of a plane in space given three points. And that's the example that we are on next. So we're going to find, uh, oh, this is question number three, or example number three. Find an equation. of a plane containing the points one, negative two, one, two, negative one, zero, and three, negative two, two. Um, and just so that we have a, a reference point, a, a, a name for these points, I'm going to call them P, Q, and R. You can do that if you'd like. If it doesn't you know, matter to you, that's fine too. Um, so what we need to do is we need to actually find um, the vectors that correspond to um, a couple of these points and see if we can find the orthogonal vector to that. So we'll take vector P, Q. So again, that means uh, point Q minus point P. So I have 2 minus 1 is 1. I have negative 1 minus negative 2, which would be also 1. And then I have 0 minus 1, which would be negative 1. And uh, PR, I'll use that as my other vector. You, you can choose your vectors. Um, these are not looking like vectors. They're looking like air, uh, rays. Um, OK, that's better. Um, so vector QR would be, again, 3 minus 2, which is 1, negative 2 minus 1, which is, um, hang on. Oh, I said P, P, R, not, I was looking at R and Q, my bad. Let me go back here. P, R is what I have um, done before, so we'll continue with that. So 3 minus 1 would be 2. Um, I have negative 2 minus 2, which would, minus negative 2, which would be 0. And then 2 minus 1, which is 1. Okay, so these are my vectors P, Q, and P, R. If you had done P, Q, and Q, R, it would be fine as well. These are just the ones that I chose. Um, and we were going to find the orthogonal vector to those two plane, or those two, uh, the, to those two vectors. Let me say it right. <laughs> so we have P, Q, um, cross product with Q, R. And um, we've done enough of these at this point, so I'm just going to jump to, um, you know, the two-dimensional form. I have I, and I have my points uh, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, minus J. And my coordinates for J would be 1, 2, or 1, negative 1 across the top, and 2, 1 at the bottom. Let me make this a little smaller so we can shift it around and continue working. And then I have plus k. And for k I would have 1, 1, 2, 0. Okay. And if I take a look at this, um, of course this one's giving me a 1, so I have 1i or just i. Um, I actually get components from both of the um, diagonals on the j component. Here is 1. And this would be minus negative 2, which becomes um, a 3. And then the negative in front of the j makes it negative 3j. Okay, very good. And then on the cross over here, this first diagonal, of course, is 0. So I have this diagonal, which is 2. So subtracting that would make it a negative 2k. 
So my orthogonal vector would actually be i minus 3j minus 2k. So this is the direction of the orthogonal vector, and we're able to use that information to find the plane that's normal to this. And um, we should be able to use any of the ordered pairs that we have for um, the points that we're given, any of the ordered triples, I should say. So our equation would have the um, slope values, or the direction values of those components of the vector. So the first one would be a 1, and then it would be x minus, and I think I'm just using the first point P, yeah, x minus 1, and then minus 3, because that's the second directional component for our cross, uh, our, our orthogonal vector. And then I would have y minus a negative 2, or y plus 2 and then minus 2 for my orthogonal vector, and then z minus 1 equals 0. And we'll clean this up and get this into standard form. So this is x minus 1 minus 3y minus 6 minus 2z plus 2 equals 0. And if we collect the variable components, I have x minus 3y minus 2z and then all of my constants, which is negative 1, negative 6, and positive 2, would be negative 5. So this would be my final version for my standard part, uh, or standard way of expressing the plane. All right, uh, kind of a visual question next. Um, we're going to take a look at thinking about um, the intercepts of a plane. Um, so this is example number four, and we're going to find all intercepts, and we're going to attempt anyway to sketch the given plane. know that I'm terrible at sketching, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, so um, here's my plane. It's 2x minus y plus 4z equals 4. And of course, finding an intercept um, would be finding where you have zeros in the other two locations. So for example, if you want the x-intercept, then that would mean that y and z are both 0. So if y and z are both 0, I'm left with 2x equals 4 x is 2, so my x-intercept is 2, 0, 0. And we can do that for each of our intercepts. So my y-intercept is when x equals 0 and z equals 0, which would leave me with negative y equals 4, or y is negative 4. So I have 0, negative 4, 0. And then last but not least um, is my z-intercept. And the z-intercept is when x equals 0 and y equals 0, which would leave me with 4z equals 4, or z equals 1, which is 0, 0, 1. So these are my three um, intercepts in three dimensions. So when we talked about this before, we talked about, I'd like that to be a little bit thicker, just a moment. Let's try that. We talked about creating our um, three-dimensional graph by having a vertical component, and then we have these two that are sort of drawn at an angle. The angle is not super important, but it does look like it's kind of um, perspective involved. Um, I need the intercepts that are listed here. So my x-intercept needs to be 2. If you remember, this is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So x is 2, would be about right here. I have a y-intercept of negative 4, which is kind of tricky, right? Because it needs to go in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so I'm going to attempt to do that by sort of drawing this, um, you know, continuation of this line backwards dotted. Um, and we will mark 4 back on that. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we've at least plotted the right location, even if our visual here in a moment is not, um, you know, ideal. And then my z-intercept, which is 1. So if I go up 1 on my z-axis, which would be about right there, I would have this intercept. And so I've plotted the intercepts, and then what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to kind of connect these. And I'll try with a different color and see if I can get a, a better, um, I don't know, a better picture of what's going on. Let's try with red since I used red dots. So my plane is actually the connection of these three points, and if you imagine extending those three points out beyond what's sh certainly showing up as a triangle, you would have the plane. So this is kind of the best that I can do at drawing it. Um, just do your best. Just make sure points are plotted in the right location, and we'll be good to go with that. OK, 
Okay, one last example. We're going to talk about um, finding the angle between lines. So our last example for this lesson, we're going to state if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Um, and in particular, we know how to decide if they're parallel. We can look at their vectors, right? Um, and then we looked at another example, of course, where we decided whether or not they intersected. Um, and we sort of made the assumption that they intersected. We looked for where their intersection was. We're kind of going to do the same thing here. In order to decide if they're perpendicular, we're going to try and figure out what that angle actually is. And if that angle is 90, then we'll know that they're perpendicular. So that's kind of how this is going to go. Um, here are my lines. Um, number uh, 5 is our example that we're on. My first set of lines, um, and this is in parametric form, is x equals 1 minus 3t, y equals 2 plus 4t, and z equals, this is a set of lines, z equals negative 6 plus t. Um, my second set of, or, well, the second line set of uh, parametric equations is what it is is x equals 1 plus 2s, y equals 2 minus 2s, and z equals negative 6 plus s. Uh, and we talked about last time finding the corresponding vectors. So, um, you know what, we'll just call them vector a and b. So vector a on the first one would be the components that are the slope components, basically, of each of the parametric equations. So I have negative 3, 4, 1, and we'll call the second one vector b, and it's the same thing. So I have 2, negative 2, 1. Um, in particular, you can tell these are very quickly not parallel. Um, the last two values actually match, which means in order for there to be a scalar multiple, it would have to be the exact same vector. And yeah, then, then we would have parallel, um, parallel vectors. Um, with a scalar factor of 1. Um, but that's not what's going on here, right? We, we don't have any, we don't have the other components, the i and the j components that match. So these are not parallel. Very quickly decide that. So um, how do we find the value of the angle between them? So let me go back in our slides to what we had talked about um, last time. Try and find out where it was. Um... I thought that I presented that. I think it was in the previous lesson. It's where it was. Sorry, I don't have a slide on this lesson. It was on the, on the previous lesson. Let me just write it in here. Um, what we're actually referencing this equation that I'm talking about is that the cosine of theta equals our two vectors. So I called them a and b. So a dot b, um, and it is a dot product on top. And then it was the um, vector 1. Sorry, different notation for my notes. My bad. Um, so this is the um, magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. That's actually from the previous lesson that we had done before. Okay, so that's what we're needing to find. In order to do that, we have to find the dot product. Um, and then we also need to find um, each of the individual magnitudes. So um, the magnitudes, let's just do those first because um, we already have the individual um, vectors listed. So the magnitude of A would be the square root of 9 or 3 squared plus 4 squared, plus 1 squared. Um, if you add those together, you have 9 plus 16 plus 1, so this is the square root of 26. And then if we do the magnitude of B, we would have the square root of 2 squared, plus 2 squared, plus 1 squared. So that would be 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So the square root of 9 would actually be 3, so that's kind of cool. And then our dot product of our vectors, um, it would actually be component-wise, right? So it would be 3 times 2, I'm sorry, that would be negative 3, I left my sign off. Negative 3 times 2 um, plus 4 times negative 2 plus 1 times 1. Um, so the first piece is negative 6, and then I have negative 8 and positive 1. Um, this ends up giving me negative 13. 
right, so I can use the um, equation that I mentioned up here before to find my angle between them. So the cosine of theta is equal to that dot product, which was negative 13 over the square root of 26 times 3 as such. Um, and then to find theta, we would do the inverse cosine. So inverse cosine, or arc cosine if you prefer, of negative 13 over 3 square root 26. Um, and if you put this in your calculator, because this is not you know, a unit circle type value, you actually get 2.59 radians. Um, you know, in other words, theta is not equal to um, 90 degrees or pi over 2. So um, we actually have that they are not per perpendicular. So um, we'll reference that as well. I already said before they were not parallel. Now I can say that they are not perpendicular. And the angle between them, theta, we just found. It's 2.59 radians. All right, in terms of homework, let me flip the slide since I'm kind of out of space on this one. Um, your homework for this section is found on page 790, and it's problem numbers 3, 6, 26, 27, 30, 31, 42, 43, 63, and 66. And of course, there's a web assignment that's already been out there. And this assignment will be due on Monday.